Hi, I'm Kate and I make junk journals and today we are going to make a cover and sew in all the pages to make a complete journal. You guys, I am so excited. Today, not only are we going to create a, a complete junk journal, which I know many of you are very eager for, so I'm really excited about that, but also I get to announce my giveaway officially. So we are going to give away this book and um, it's the one that I've been making all the pages for all of my tutorials in. And as I mentioned last time, I tried to make a tutorial to making this cover, but that did not work. So we're gonna make a different cover today, but this is the, this is the journal that is gonna be in the giveaway. All you have to do is be a subscriber and comment on this video by February 27th, 2021. It is worldwide, so you can live anywhere and enter. And there's more details in the description and then at the end of the video. In the description, you'll also find some resources and links of some of the cool stuff I'm using in this video. And if you have any questions, please comment below because I love answering your questions and I'm gonna do another little Q&A at the end of this video. Okay, enough chatting because I've got a lot to get through today. So when I first started making junk journals, I always made the cover and sewed in the signatures first before I decorated it. And that is great, but then I started to like my pages more bulky. And so I discovered that it was me just trying to get all my pages to fit in my junk journal without creating it into an alligator mouth junk journal, which I am super anti alligator mouth junk journal. And all that means is that the pages are so full that it starts to open up like an alligator mouth and you can't close it, it just always is kind of open. I really like it to be kind of square with lots of room and you could even kind of squish it closed, but none of this puffy alligator mouth business. So just to make it easier for me to add as much bulk as I want without having to worry about the size of my cover, I started doing my pages first and then putting it in the cover at the end. But you can absolutely do it in any order and that's totally fine. So today, because I don't have pages ready to sew into a junk journal, but I need to show you how to sew a junk journal together, I'm gonna just have a bunch of blank pages and I'll decorate that one later. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna decide how big we want our junk journal. And I'm gonna keep it the same size as this so that it kind of is relatable and easier for me to kind of show you what I did. So the way I decide the size of my cover is I already know that these pages are five by seven. And so I just make this about a quarter of an inch bigger than this. So if this is a five by seven, I'm at least gonna do a five and a quarter by seven and a quarter. And I give myself that little bit of space just so that the pages don't go all the way to the end and there's kind of a border of cover everywhere to kind of buffer the pages from getting ruined. It all fits nicely and looks really good. So what I'll do is I'm gonna just take my scissors and I'm just gonna cut this box, and it doesn't matter how I cut this end because it's all getting trimmed off. This end also doesn't matter, it's all getting trimmed off. But this end, I'm actually gonna use some of this. So I'm going to cut it. Uh, my junk journals range from anywhere to three quarters of an inch in their spine width to, you know, three inches if there's tons of signatures in it. So depending on the size, we're just doing a one signature book. Um, so it's gonna be somewhere around, usually an inch or an inch and a quarter if I have kind of fat pages, is kind of my go-to. So I just need to make sure that I have enough room to where I could kind of build that between the two halves. So generally it's going to be about a third of the way over and it doesn't have to be straight, but I cut straight-ish um, about a third of it off and then two thirds on the other side. And then that way I can kind of, I can kind of shrink it to here and see that might be too long still so I might trim more off in the middle. Anyway, it'll make sense a little bit more when I do that part but this is how I kind of set it up. Then I just kind of trim off the excess edges just so that it's easier to work with. And then I'm gonna trim this side as well. Okay, so I'm left with two pieces like this. Now, I know this is gonna work for me because this is larger than five and a quarter by seven and a quarter. Um, so you can use any food packaging that is just larger than the journal size that you're going for. So now I'm gonna bring my cutting board over and it's important when I measure this that I'm measuring it on the fold line, not on the wonky line that I cut so that I know that it's straight. And because this is already pretty much the size I need, I'm just gonna barely trim off the first edge. And that's just basically to straighten it. And then on this side, I'm gonna see how long I actually want it. 
So I'm just gonna flip it over so I can keep it on that straight edge. And we're gonna do seven and a quarter. And it looks like I don't have enough space. So I'm just gonna do it a little more than seven, just right up to the line. So because I can be flexible and I'm starting from scratch and I can make sure that my pages are um, will fit inside this, I'm just gonna go with this. But if this was for my final journal that had to be for this book, I would probably just get a new food package and make sure that that was seven and a quarter because I really like that extra uh, quarter inch. Okay, and then for the length, I'm just going to folding this down because I don't want to go from, this is going to be the spine, I need to do the front cover. I'm going to go to five and a quarter right here and trim that there. And then the same thing for this, we're going to bend that, trim up just the very tip, and then we're going to flip it over to measure, and I just had a little over seven, it was right there. And then this one will be five and a quarter. Then I'm gonna take this larger spine section and I'm going to trim it. I'm gonna line this up at about uh, an inch and a half because I think that's about how big I'm gonna want my spine. If I have the pages pre-decorated, what I'll do is I'll kind of hold this um, spine together and I'll put all my pages in the middle and see how that kind of fits and if I need to kind of expand it or not and it's really easy because we kind of have all this room we can um, kind of move this further away to make a bigger spine or closer to make a smaller spine um, so I just put in the pages see how it fits in there make sure there's a little bit of squish room and then it's kind of straight um, and then I measure that and decide how the spine length is going to be. So this has nine papers in it. So it's nine papers, 18 leaves, and 32 pages. So for that size, if it's kind of bulky, I believe this is an inch and a quarter. This is an inch and a half. All right, so we're just going to take our Beacon Fabri-Tac, or you can use Beacon 3-in-1, or whatever your favorite glue is, and I'm just going to put a bunch of glue on the shorter end of the spine. Then I'm just going to line that up and push that down. And then I kind of like to stand it up to make sure that that kind of is how it's supposed to be. So there we go, as even as you possibly can. And while that's drying, I'm just gonna put two little clamps down just in case I bump it and it slides, but it'll dry pretty quick, but I'll just set it to the side while we pick our paper. So I'm gonna use this paper for the cover and then I'm also gonna use this fabric for the side and the back. So it will kind of wrap around like this. You can totally do the whole thing paper or the whole thing fabric, or you can even do like two papers with just a strip of fabric. I do that sometimes, but for some reason, this is just kind of what I landed on as my most preferred way. I just like the way it looks and feels and I like the process. Okay, so we need to trim this down to be the same size as the cover. So as close as you possibly can get it is great. If it's exact, that is the dream, but I don't think I've ever had it totally exact. Um, if I have to be a little bit bigger or a little bit smaller, I like it to be a little bit smaller than the cover just because I can really ink the edges and make it kind of hard to see, but it's not like poking out or ruining the length or bulkiness of the cover. It's just not like awkward or it won't rip off. So this ended up being seven inches and an eighth of an inch. So I'm gonna do that same thing for this one. So we'll see if that fits and that looks pretty good. It looks like my paper is just a teeny tiny bit too long. So I am just going to use my scissors because it's such a small amount and just kind of gently take off just a tiny, tiny bit. And hopefully that will get it to just fit a little bit better. Yeah, that's really good. Okay, so for the width, I don't really need it to be perfect because we're covering this part with fabric. So if this is like that or like that, it doesn't matter, it's all behind fabric. So I like to give myself a little more room than I need so that there's a little you know, wiggle room over here. And I can just mark where I wanna cut that. Okay, so that lines up really nicely. So we had a round corner theme going on in this book and we round pretty much all the edges that we could. 
So I'm going to round this one as well to kind of show you that. So I'm going to round the paper before I put it on. You could do it after, but it's just a little bit more work for your corner rounder. And then I'm going to round um, the cover. Okay, great. And this is dry, so I'm gonna take these off. And we're gonna glue this down. And I really try to get an even amount of glue on the whole thing. I always like imagine that somebody is trying to like tear apart my journal. Maybe it's because I have three little kids and they tear everything apart. So this is like my default mode. But I really put a lot of glue on. I always feel like it takes a lot of glue to make a cover. So I am just gonna cover the entire backside and I am gonna really put a lot toward the edges too so it kind of gushes out of the sides a little bit and I can kind of wipe it off because I want the edges to be sealed to the edge of the cover. Okay, so we're gonna take this and just try to line it up with the edges as best we can. Press it down and if any tiny little glue things peek out, we can just wipe them off. Before I glue the fabric, I'm gonna flip it on the inside and I'm gonna reinforce this spine. So I really like to get these priority mail envelopes. I just grab them at the United States Post Office, but it's made out of Tyvek. So if you're not by a post office or you don't live in the US, just look for any packaging that is made from Tyvek. And you can use lots of other stuff to reinforce, uh, but this is kind of nice because it's kind of uh, a little bit difficult to rip and it's kind of built to be really sturdy and really thin. And like I said, I like to imagine somebody trying to rip apart my junk journal and I'm trying to counter them. So this is just a way that I can feel like it's extra strong. So I'm just gonna cut a piece um, a little bit wider than the spine and a little bit shorter than the book. So usually a piece about like that, that fits just like that. So I'm going to glue this and it's not the amount of glue so much as the coverage that I'm trying to get. I really just want as much coverage as I could possibly get with this. Okay, and once that's glued, I just flip it over and I kind of rub it around a little bit to make sure that the glue is everywhere. And then I'm gonna kind of use my fingernails and get it in all those little cracks and creases and seams and these um, fold lines. And then I'm gonna bend up one of the edges and just kind of make sure that's sitting in the gutter of that crack really well and that it's not puckering weird. And then same with the other side. Okay, that's good. And I've made a lot of journals without reinforcing it at all. And I just sewed it into the spine like this. And it's strong and it's great enough. I just, because I usually sell my journals, I try to just make sure the quality is really high and that over time, the spine isn't gonna wear out. So, but it's probably fine without reinforcement. It always just kind of helps for peace of mind. It also depends on the thickness of your packaging or cardboard as well. The thinner it is, the more you might want to just, even with a piece of scrapbook paper or book page or anything, just kind of reinforce it just a little bit. All right, so let's take our fabric and we want the size of this to kind of go over the edge about a half an inch either way. And then um, same with here, about half an inch longer than the cover. So I'm going to want about a, somewhere between a fourth of the cover or a third of the cover covered with fabric. So somewhere kind of in that range. And then I'm gonna want it to be half an inch longer, so I'm gonna trim it right here. And then I'll just rip along the seam. And then for this, I'm going to just kind of see this is about a half an inch bigger and this is a little bit long, so I'm just gonna trim a tiny bit off the top of that too so that it fits a little nicer. So it's gonna look something like this. And maybe this is even a little liberal or you can kind of figure out the kind of border that you want. I'm gonna trim off the corners, but still leaving room away from the rounded corner. But I just want to reduce the bulk of the corners a little bit. And you can see with this fabric, it is kind of see-through. 
So I can see that food packaging. If this bothers you, you can totally put another layer right here before you put it on. It does not bother me at all. And I kind of like being able to see some of the food label um, through it because it just kind of seems, I don't know, more junk journal-y. Okay, so to glue this, I always start um, with this spine. So I am going to put two lines of glue right along the crease of that spine just to make sure that gets glued on really well. And then I'm gonna just try to cover as much of the spine as I can with the glue. And then I'm just gonna spill out about, I don't know, quarter of an inch, half inch over either of the sides just to make it so that I have a little wiggle room when I glue the rest. Just getting a little glue border on either side. And then I'm going to take this and kind of eyeball where I want it to go and then flip it over and see if I'm right. So I'm too close to the top, I'm gonna pull it down and it looks like I'm far away from that edge so I was planning on having more cover space. So I just am kind of wiggle it around and I can always trim more of this off if I want and just kind of eyeballing everything, making sure it looks good. Then I'm gonna see how that looks by creasing this back. Sometimes when I crease this over, I can see that it's way just not straight. So this is looking really good though, so I like that. And I'm just gonna press in and really try to get that glue in. I'm gonna use my fingers and really push in that crease so that it gets in there. And if you use a thin fabric like I'm doing, sometimes the glue kind of seeps through. So you don't wanna use quite as thick glue and just kind of thinly put it everywhere. But you do want a really good coverage um, because if there is a spot that didn't have glue on it, it's gonna make a little bubble, a little air pocket. So you really want to get as much even coverage all over the whole thing as you can with no air pockets. Um, and then depending on the weight of your fabric, if it's super thick, you can put tons of glue on there and it won't go through. But this is kind of more of a delicate fabric, so it will bleed through if it's too piled up on there. Okay, now that that's on there, I'm going to just lift this back and I'm going to glue um, just big enough to get this little flap all the way glued. And then I'll just kind of press it forward Then I'm just gonna do the same thing on the other side. I'll just pull this back and I kind of pull a little bit back more so I don't miss any little gaps. And I'm just going to swirl some glue and I usually do like just a chunk at a time. So I'm gonna do this half first and then I'll do that second half next. I do try to get a good coverage here as well, but it's not quite as important as around the front and back of the spine because that's where it kind of the fabric will get folded and bend and move around and so those air bubbles will really be noticeable. Where this is important, but it's not quite as prominent if you have a little air bubble. So now that I have that, I'm gonna just put it over and smooth it down. Okay, and then I'll do this last section. Okay, so now that's glued, we're just gonna press that down as well. Okay, and this is a little bit thick to my taste, so I'm going to trim that and tear this edge off just a little bit. And that'll just be a little easier for me to work with. And I'm gonna cut in here just a little bit more to make the corners less bulky. Okay, so this is my preferred length. What is that? I don't know, half an inch around all the sides. So let's glue this top part down. And what I will do is I will kind of make a little line across the top of it with glue. And then I'm going to swirl around some glue. And then when I have that glue there, I'm just gonna wrap this around and down, pushing it down. And I want it to be tight around the edge of that. So I'm gonna be kind of pulling it down, getting it to stretch over that edge and not pucker or have extra bumps. And then we'll do the bottom side, same thing. Just do that little string of glue. And then just swirl some glue underneath. 
and then stretch that over and glue that down. Okay, now that we have those two sides folded and glued, um, we're gonna do this one. It's pretty much the same thing. We just have to roll the corners as we work. So I'm gonna do that string of glue right at the top. And then I'm gonna swirl my little glue border. And then I'm just gonna put some extra glue in the corners. And then instead of just folding that down, first I'm going to fold that one time down on either edge. Then I'm going to put glue on the outside of that. And then we're going to roll that down and glue it. And it's the same thing, even if it's not a round corner, I'll trim it and wrap it around the edge just like this and it will just take the shape of the corner. So this isn't something I just do for round corners. But when you make that fold, it's going to just make that corner look really nice and then it can lay flat. So now we have the basic foundation of our outside cover. Let's work a little bit more on the inside of our cover. I'm going to line each of the papers with scrapbook paper. So I'm going to select some scrapbook paper. And for the front cover, I want it to fit exactly, just like the top cover. So I'm going to be doing that at um, 7 and 1 8. And um, this side, though, I can give it a little border and so that I can kind of see the fabric peeking out. So I'm going to just visually mark this one to something I like. So a little border at the bottom, a little border at the top, and I'll cut it somewhere there. And then lengthwise, I'm going to be putting something in the spine so I don't have to go all the way to the spine, but just kind of a quarter of an inch to a half an inch away from it. That is somewhere around here. So here and here for the back. And then this side, I'm going to measure that to about seven and an eighth and I'm going to measure it again about a quarter of an inch to a half an inch away from that spine somewhere around there. Okay, so here's our front side, back side. And sometimes I'll do these the same paper, sometimes they'll do different paper, sometimes they're book pages or music sheets, just whatever paper you want to use is fine. Okay, let's round our outside corners. I'm going to leave my inside corners square. And we've been using the Tim Holtz Distressing Weathered Wood for all of our pages, so we're going to use that again for the cover. And that just gives a little bit of definition, texture, interest, border, makes it a little more high contrast. So I'm just going to glue the entire back of both sides and press them down. So that side's glued. I'm just going to put it on there and kind of slide it around till it's where I like. And so that didn't match up right away. For some reason, I must have shoved the paper in a little too far and it got kind of more round. But that's okay because there's a couple ways I can fix that. I could either just put a lot of ink in so it just kind of blends in, or I could like grab some washi tape and kind of put it around the edge. I could also trim that down and make them match. So however you want to fix those little problems is fine. There's always a solution to the little things that don't quite line up. Then I'm just going to press this in. Grr. Get out all my feelings. Okay, now I'll glue this back side. Swirly, swirly, swirl. All right, and then for this one, I'm just going to kind of make sure my board ends look fairly even and then press it on top. Then I'm just going to take some of that same fabric that we used for the outside and I'm going to just make sure it's shorter than the book, but taller than where the edge of your fabric folded so that we can kind of cover that. So this sideways just so happens to be about right. So I am just going to have this a little bit longer than that gap. So going over anywhere from a quarter an inch, half an inch, if you went crazy, you could, you could even glue it on that if your heart really wanted to. But I do it usually about quarter to half inch. So we'll just kind of eyeball and say there. 
me rip that off. Okay, I wish I could tell you I was a master of this part, but the truth is, is there's a little part of me that just crosses my fingers and goes for it every time. What I want is for there to be zero puckering when I fold this up. So I want total smooth coverage and I want that fabric to just kind of, you know, not warp or bubble as I bend. So one of the best things you can do is just make sure that your coverage of your glue is very thorough. So I'm just gonna squirrel the glue all around, really trying to just get all of that covered. And then I'll bleed over the edge just a little bit because I don't ever like to stop gluing right on an edge because then when you fold it back to continue gluing, it's always just a little harder. So we'll do it just like that. Okay, so now I'm gonna take my fabric strip and try to make that semi-straight semi-even on all the edges. That looks about right. I'm gonna press that in and try to really get that on there. Okay, and then I'm just gonna peel back each edge and glue those. Press those down. Okay, so now I'm going to bend that up and you see how it kind of puckers right there. I'm going to try to smooth that down a little bit while it's still wet. And I'm going to just make sure it's really well in that crease that everything is glued nicely. And then same with this side. I'm going to just kind of try to smooth everything down. And see that is pretty good. It just kind of puckers a tiny, tiny, tiny bit, but I will never notice that. So I'm really happy with that. Okay, so this is the complete base structure of the cover. And all we have to do now is embellish it a little bit more and stick in pages. So let's start by inking up these paper edges. I'm just gonna get that corner extra. You know, I lied. I'm gonna trim it just a little bit. There, that just looks a little smoother. So you can start with this, sew in your journal pages, and then do the cover. Do the cover first and then do your journal pages, however you want to do it. I'm going to do the cover last, so let's trim down all our journal pages and sew them in first. So because I don't have any decorated pages, we're going to have to use our imagination just a little bit. So these three papers are going to represent those three spreads or six pages that we have decorated and designed. So we're gonna imagine that these ones are our bulky ones. Then I need another fairly thick paper to go on the outside of the signature. And then I need a bunch of just normal paper. And by normal, I mean exciting variety of paper. You can just use normal copy paper, notebook paper, whatever. But I like to have about this kind of ratio between bulky decorated and just plain. And that's why I like to get a good variety of papers. I'm always looking for plain paper with texture and color. That way it can kind of look interesting without me having to do something to every page. So I'll put in a signature anywhere from eight to 15 pages. 15 if I don't really have much bulk and eight if it's like super fat. So I have nine papers here and that's gonna be about right. And that's what I did for this book as well. So you can see it has this outside paper for the signature. It has a bulky decorative page. It has two just textured papers, another bulky page, two textured papers, bulky page, textured paper, and this middle pocket that we'll make. So that's kind of the pacing I like. As you go, there's tons of writing space. There's still enough interactive pages as well that it keeps it really fun and interesting. So let's kind of recreate that. I'm gonna cut them down so it's five by seven, or if it's folded out, it's seven by 10, and then we're gonna put them together. Because my cover's a little shorter, I'm gonna actually just do um, an eighth of an inch shorter than seven inches, so that I get that quarter inch barrier on my cover. And then also for my outside signature, I want it to encompass the rest of them, so I do it more like five and a quarter, and I can always trim it later. But as this one kind of eats the rest of them, it kind of shrinks back a little bit to make room for the bulk. And I want that to be able to house all those papers inside of it without them sticking out. Something that would definitely make this better is if I had a better cutting tool. This is fine and it works great and I'm really happy with the result, but it would be really nice to have like a big chopping thing or something that's more precise. Cause I feel like this can often get just a tiny bit off. 
again, it works great and I kind of love that hodgepodgey feel, but someday I will want a better tool for this. Okay, so here's all our papers chopped down. So we're gonna order them. We're gonna have this be the outside of our signature and then we'll put a bulky page next. Here's two blank papers, another bulky page, two more plain papers. And then this time I'm gonna have this bulky page face inward. So that way they're not all turned the same way and there's a tiny bit of variety. And then this will be our middle paper. And so that lines up pretty well. And I like how the outside one is the longest one so that when it folds over all of them, there won't be any pages peeking out. And how I like to do this is I like to start with the middle one because that can have a tight crease. But if you notice, when they're all together, the outside page doesn't really clamp tightly. Um, it's kind of stays rounded. So it doesn't need to be tightly creased. But the closer it gets to the center, the more tight the crease. So this center one, I can have a tight crease. And then this one, I'm just gonna fold around it and crease it down on top of it. And then that will give a little bit of space for the paper inside. And then same with this. I'm gonna line that up and fold it over. And see now that crease is not quite as tight as the middle crease and it will nest in better. And then you just keep going until all your papers nest right on top of each other. So as you see, if you cut them all the same length, they get longer as they go toward the middle because their spines are stacked on each other, so it kind of pushes them out. And I kind of like that, um, but again, not peeking out of the signature. So we'll put the longest piece there, and then that will kind of let all of them nicely sandwich along that and just look a little bit cleaner. So here is our book pages. And we're also gonna pick out a piece of scrapbook paper to put in the center so that we can cover up our thread. So I'll show you what I mean by that in a second, but for now, we're just gonna cut a small piece of paper and you want it just to be kind of shorter than the book. So I don't want it all the way to the edges. Usually somewhere like that is good. And I'm just gonna fold down one of these edges and then fold this to where um, there's a border because we're gonna stick a card in there for our center. So make a crease right there and kind of create this little pocket. So we don't have to glue or do anything to this now. We're just gonna make those creases and have this be the center of our book. So if you want to, you can do stuff like stick an envelope in there that kind of peeks out or a shorter envelope that you kind of use as another page or just kind of you know add little tiny pages or translucent pages or whatever you wanna do, you can add and just kind of make it how you want it. So I think I am gonna go ahead and just add this little envelope right there. Sometimes I go crazy and put tons of little papers, uh, but lately I've been just kind of keeping it simple. Okay, when you have all of them lined up the way you want, you need to really make sure every single page is oriented the way you want. When you are just doing blank papers, it doesn't matter so much, but if my pocket was upside down or pre-built page was upside down, or even if I had like words on paper and I want it to be right side up, it's really easy to accidentally have your pages be upside down. Or maybe it's just really easy for me because I make mistakes like that. So I just go through and I double check and say, okay, I want, that's where I want everything. Um, you know, your papers that are smaller than the other papers, do I want it at the top? Do I want it at the bottom? Do I want it in the middle? Just go through and really make sure that all your papers are exactly the way you want them in the end. And then you can just clamp them down so that kind of stay put. Okay, so these are ready to be sewn in. And sometimes I round all the edges in the beginning and sometimes I sew it all in and around the edges after. It really doesn't matter. It's just kind of whenever I feel like it. But at this point, I'll do it after because I already have it all clamped together. Okay, so I have my cover and I have my pages. I am gonna cut out a little strip of paper that is close to, as exact as I can, the size of the spine. And I guess I shouldn't say exact because it's I eyeball it, but just as close as you can. So there's the crease, something like that. And then I really try to get that all the way to the top and mark 
the very bottom. So that kind of fits nicely right in my spine. So now this is gonna be our template. So I'm gonna fold this in half right down the center and I really am gonna try to do this accurately. So this line is gonna dictate where the lace goes on the back of your book and you want it nice and straight. So we want this line nice and straight. So once we have that crease, we're gonna fold it this way, just right in half, making another crease. And then for our last folds, we're going to tri-fold it. So we're just gonna kind of see if we can fold about a third over and then fold this over. And this does not have to be exact, but the closer it is, the more it looks nice. Okay, so that leaves you with these little creases and it makes six X's. And by six, I mean five. So because it's kind of hard to see paper folds, I'm gonna take my pen and I'm just going to put a little dot in the middle of all of those X folds. And then I'm gonna say that this is going to be the top. And I'm gonna mark it so I can make sure I keep the orientation the same and everything lines up. This is an all, and I got this just on Amazon in a bookmaking kit, and I've linked the same kit that I got, and I really love it. It comes with some string, some needles, and this all, and a couple of other things. So I did not get one of these right in the beginning, and I made a few junk journals without it, and I do not recommend that. I like got an embroidery needle and I put it in like a thimble and I tried to like stuff cotton so it wouldn't wiggle around and I tried to push it in and it was like a nightmare and really hard and it did work but it was really difficult and the results were not as nice. So I really strongly recommend that you get one of these if you don't have one already and we're gonna line up the template that we made right to that spine and we're gonna clip it on and really make sure that's lined up at the top and bottom and sides and that it's straight because again, this is going to dictate how straight um, you sew in your pages. Okay, then we're gonna take our awl and we're just going to stab little holes in all of those dots. So this is about how far I like to stab mine through. You can notice that it gets fatter and fatter the more you push. And in the beginning, I used to really want the holes to be small for some reason, but I found that about right here is my preferred width. Something else that makes a big difference in how thin or fat that you'll want your holes is how big your string is. So if you're using really fat string, you're gonna need a really fat hole. And if you're using thinner string, you can get away with a thinner hole. So I like them kind of big because it's a lot easier to sew. And it does not make my book looser either, but I don't go all the way, just about right there. Okay. So we're gonna take this and we're gonna move this over to our pages, making sure that the T is at the top and we're just gonna double check and say, yes, I do want these pages this way because you do not wanna accidentally do your whole book upside down, which I may or may not have done in the past. So to line this up, remember that we cut the cover a quarter of an inch longer than our pages. So we're gonna have a little bit of room on either side. I like to make it just a tiny bit more roomy on the bottom than the top because if I'm off a little bit or the pages aren't that straight and they kind of peek out of the book, they peek out of the top and it's not the prettiest thing, but it's still functional. If the pages were to peek out of the bottom, then you wouldn't be able to set it down on a table and it would really cause problems. So I just slightly put it more toward the top than to the bottom, but I still want a border on the top and it to look fairly even. So we're gonna clamp this down and then we grab our awl and then same thing, we're just gonna poke a hole straight through. And you wanna make sure that you're trying to angle the awl kind of the same way and that it's going straight through the back of the spine. Okay, so I've got my five holes in there and my five holes here, and these are ready to be sewn together. So here are the strings that came in my bookmaking kit. There was also a cream colored one, but I used that one up because I love that. Before I got my kit, I just used string like this and that worked great. Um, but I really do like this because it's just a little slicker and it's really strong. And I like that there's a variety of colors. So I definitely need to order more because I'm starting to run low. 
So I'm gonna use black for this one, just cause it's a little more of a high contrast. When things are a little bit more muted or earthy or vintage, I use the brown. And then whenever I want something to pop or it's a little more colorful, if I had the cream, I think I would use the cream, but I also like this black. Okay, so I am just going to measure this out to be two and about a half times longer than this, and that will give me plenty of string. And then we'll just thread this needle. Okay, here we go. This is the fun part. We're gonna do, I think it's called a saddle stitch, and I really like it, it's fun. So we're gonna dive through the center of that and then pull it through the center just like that. And this is the time I like to triple check that everything's facing the right way, because you never know. And then I'm going to um, go in through the next hole down. So we came out the center and we're gonna go in one down. Oops, I should probably hold it in front of you instead of me. And then pull that up. And then just making sure that you're pulling this nice and tight so that you don't have any puckerings or loose things and it's just keeping tight. Okay, now that we've gone down the center and up the next hole down, we're going to, on the very bottom hole, like this. So again, pulling that tight to make sure that nothing's puckering or getting loose. Okay, now we're going to go up one through that hole that we just kind of came down and up through, um, and we're gonna go down this way. Sometimes I accidentally stab the string, so that's why I really like to keep it tight because if I do that, and if I stab the string and it's tight, it's fine. If it's loose and I stab the string, then I can't ever tighten it. So I really try to kind of go along the side of the other strings so that I don't have any problems tightening it. But if it happens, I'll be prepared because I'll be pulling it nice and tight. Okay, so keep pulling nice and tight. Okay, so now we're going to jump over the center one and dive through the one just above it. So we're going from the second from the bottom from to the second to the top, the ones right around the middle. Now we're going to go through the top hole from the outside in. Okay, pulling that through, tightening the whole thing again making sure those are nice and tight. Everything here is nice and tight. Then I'm going to go back down that second to the top hole where we kind of just came down and out of. We'll go back in right there. Again, trying to not stab that string. And this used to take me a lot longer and be a lot harder, but I have made quite a few of these, so I'm getting the hang of it. Okay, and then we're just gonna come back up through the middle for the, for the last stitch. So this string is coming out on the left side of this center string. So I'm gonna try to come up through the right side so that I have two strings on either side of that center string. So as I come up, I'm gonna poke through and kind of guide it and make sure I'm coming out that side. And then I'm just gonna pull it extra tight, really check and make sure that looks good. And I'm gonna do a square knot, which is where you do left over right, and then right over left. So two opposite knots. And then I'm going to trim the edges, lay that down flat, and we have sewn in our pages. So everything is sewn in nicely and that's looking really good and I like the way that is inside there. The first thing I'm gonna do is squish down all the pages. I know there's like a word for it. Flatten the pages, crease the pages, wear in the pages. I don't, I don't know what it's called, but we gotta do that thing. While I'm on this center part, I'm gonna finish this by just gluing the edge, folding it over and then I'm gonna glue these two sides. 
and then that will form a pocket right there and it will also cover those strings that are coming from the middle. Okay, so we're gonna crease it that way and then I'm gonna flip this page and crease it this way. Flip and crease. And this is so everything can lay flat. And my husband was making fun of me when I learned to do this because he's like, that's what you're supposed to do with all books when you get new books. And he's like, it's just because you never read that you don't know that. And I'm like, I read sometimes, but he's right. I like to listen to books, not read physical books. And I definitely don't buy new books. So yeah, I am out of the loop when it comes to book care and creasing things. Now that we have this half done, see how it just kind of folds nicer and this one is still stiff. So we'll do it to the other side now. Okay, so now because they're not decorated at all, it seems like the pages are small for the book, but once they get bulky, it should sit about like that or about like that. So now really all you have to do is decorate the cover and if you want to put something on the inside, sometimes I don't. Sometimes I just leave it blank, especially if it's like super full and I feel like adding any more bulk will start to expand it too much. Um, so let's go ahead and just do something simple. What did we do here? Oh, here I just glued an envelope in and put a tag behind it. So let's just do that same thing. So let me find an envelope. And I'm actually gonna use the same envelope because it's so cute. And you can use anything, a plain envelope, doesn't matter. And I'm just going to glue it here and here on the back. And then I'm just gonna set it a little bit in the bottom right hand corner. I still want lots of space from here's my edge right there because I don't want that interfering with the spine. And there needs to be room here so we can put a card there. So you can just put a tag or a card back there and something in there. So this kind of is flipping up. So I think I'm gonna put something to keep that down. So I'm just gonna grab this little ticket and I'm just gonna glue the very edge right there. So close that and make sure the glued edge doesn't go on that at all right there. And then I'm gonna pull this out to let it dry so it dries a little more flat. I think I'm gonna grab some washi tape and I'll just reinforce that just a little bit and then that will tuck right in there. And I'm just gonna add a little color. Stick that little hashtag on. There we go, just a little happier. Okay, and if I wanted to add something on the back, I totally could, or I think I'm just gonna leave it blank. So let's do the cover, which let's have a little heart to heart about covers. I have a total love-hate relationship with covers because they're really fun, and when they turn out really nice, it's awesome, but there can be a lot of pressure because let's face it, we judge books by their cover. So something that I really like to do is just put a piece of lace or something interesting there and make a closure and just keep it super simple. And I like this kind of more plain look because it fits in bookshelves a little bit nicer and there's just less that will fall off. And I feel like once I feel the inside, if I wanted to label it or you know make it more themed to go with what I write about, there's potential later. But whenever I make something with a more blank cover, it does not sell nearly as fast as when I just stick some cute things on it. So this must be a lot more appealing than this. So I've been trying to add things to the cover more because it seems to be more universally appealing, even though I kind of prefer this. So obviously you're gonna do your own thing, you're gonna make your own mark and it's gonna look totally different than mine. Or you can copy me, that's totally fine too. But you can just do whatever your heart tells you. So one thing that I do on pretty much every book is make a closure. It just really makes it nice to be able to keep everything in. Plus with all my little fold out flappy things, you know, I just want to keep them safe and I know nothing is going to fall out if it's all together. So let's start with that and I'm going to just pick out a button. So here's my little button jar and I just kind of try to pick something that kind of matches. And I'll usually like anything that kind of works, I'll just put in a pile. So that works, that works, that works. <laughs> okay, so any of these would be fabulous. And I think I actually am gonna go with this one. Okay, so I'm gonna put this on by taking my awl and then I just eyeball where I want it, somewhere kind of in the middle, sometimes a little closer to the top if I feel like it. And then I'm definitely gonna want it at least half an inch in, but it's usually like an inch in at somewhere more like that. So once I see where I want it, I just kind of make 
a little hole. And we want to take out that card so I don't stab it. So just kind of making sure that I'm not poking through anything. And I usually try to do this before I decorate this side, but sometimes I don't. So I'm going to make two little holes just like that. And I think I'm actually going to take this kind of string. I often use my little book binding string, but I'm going to use this and I'm actually going to pull the ply out so that it's a little bit thinner. And I'll thread that in my needle. Okay, I'm going to start from the inside and just kind of sew this on there. So I went in and out and I'm just going to do that same thing one more time. So back out the way that I came out before and in the way I came in before. So that just gives it kind of two layers. And then I can just do another square knot, right over left, left over right. And I'm going to just tie a little bow. And then I'm just going to dab a little bit of glue so that that bow doesn't untie. And trim these little edges. So I'm fine with that poking out, but sometimes I will do that first and then cover it with my pocket. So you can see that this is covering up the thread. And so sometimes I'll do that too, but it doesn't bother me to see the thread. And this card will also kind of hide that. Okay, so now I've got that in there. And now to stick the elastic in, I'm going to use my crocodile. This is one of the very first things I bought because I saw that and I was like, I want to do that so bad. You can buy these little eyelets and then you can punch holes and kind of smash the eyelets in. And I love that. And I just think it looks so cool and it's so fun. So this is what I use. You can totally just poke holes and not put eyelets in but it looks so much cooler when they're those little metal things. It just looks, I don't know, so much more official. These are the little things that get me excited about junk journaling. So I'm just gonna make two holes and I'm gonna try to make them kind of similarly distanced. Then I just got new eyelets too. So I think I'm gonna do the dark ones and I think that will kind of go with our theme better. So I'm just gonna push that down and see it just kind of pokes out there. And then I put my crocodile on top and smash it down. And that looks super awesome. Now let's go on the other side and do the same thing. Okay, so now that I've got those holes, I can grab some elastic. And I just kind of got this from Walmart, and this probably both from Walmart actually. And it's just some uh, elastic cord. This is kind of thin, um, so I will double it up. That's what I did with this one, is just kind of double it up just so that I can trust it a little bit more. But I'm just gonna use this boring, normal kind. All right, so I am going to go from the outside in and then the inside out, just like that. And then this will tie around here. Now it's a little bit easier to tighten this when it's already decorated because then you know the exact amount of pressure that you want. So this I'll just be able to kind of guess though. I'm gonna kind of do a small knot and just kind of say, I want, once it's kind of this length, I'm gonna want it to kind of tighten. So I'll tighten it there. I always air a tiny bit on the side of too tight because, I mean, it's very stretchy. So if there is more bulk, it can pull, but I don't want it to be loose, so. So again, we're gonna tie a square knot. And before I really tighten it, I'm just gonna make sure that that seems about right. So it starts putting pressure about right there and I can easily stretch it to about there and then it starts getting tight. So that seems good to me. So I'm just gonna pull down on those knot edges, make sure it's nice and tight. And then I'll trim the edges, but I'm gonna trim them way long because I'm not done with them yet. So if you didn't see before, I really like to put beads on the bottom of them. So I'll get out my little bead jar, which I'm running low on beads. I need to go get more beads. And I'll just kind of put anything on the table that I think would kind of match the style that I'm doing. Okay, and I think I wanna do these two. Sometimes I like my beads to match and sometimes I like them to be really different. And I'll just string it in there. And I want them to dangle only like, I don't know, an inch or an inch and a half below. So I'll just kind of see somewhere around there looks good to me. And then I'll tie a knot right there. I'll do it loosely just to make sure that I tied that right. And that's good to me. Go ahead and tighten it. 
And then depending on the bead, like that is gonna be enough. But if the bead hole was bigger, then I could do a double knot or a triple knot or whatever I needed to do to get that bead staying on there. And then we will thread this one as well. And just kind of close to the same length. We'll tie another knot. See how we did there? So somewhere about there is good. Yeah, that's nice and tight. I'm gonna trim that off. Super cute. And then I will also kind of usually go back and just put a dab of glue on that knot so it stays there and then it adds just a little bit more bulk just because again, just trying to keep everything together. Now let's find a piece of lace or trim or something to cover that edge. Okay, here's just a nice little simple lace and I just want to measure it to be taller and shorter by about half an inch or so longer than the uh, book cover somewhere like that and then I'm going to add a string of glue right along that ledge and then I'll just take my lace and stick it right on there where I want it to kind of patting it down make sure it covers that edge and then we'll open the cover and just kind of glue these little edges around the back so I can trim the edges so that it doesn't interfere with the decoration that I have and push that one down so if you're like me, then you're done. And this is a beautiful cover. But we're gonna go ahead and add some details on the front to make it more fun. So let's pick out some fun things for the cover. I'm gonna grab my cute things bucket. Okay, so this is a pretty good pile of stuff. So this is my current method of collaging and maybe it's good and I'll do it forever or maybe I'll learn new things and be like, that was terrible. But for now, this is what I'm doing. So I want a lot of things in the base and I want them to not be very high contrast or grab a lot of attention, but just kind of be like subtle texture and color and kind of like soft busyness. So things like these that are very neutral and soft, you can see kind of like the pinks and creams and grays, like they're not gonna grab a lot of the attention and the core colors kind of match. So these are things that are kind of neutral, things that kind of just blend in and don't shout out for attention. Okay, and this is kind of where some of my art and design background comes in to help me out is I just want to keep all the leading lines kind of where I want them to be. So for instance, if I put this kind of like this, then this round edge kind of keeps me into where the center of focus is. I don't want anything angled out or pulling away and I want them all to kind of work together to kind of seem like one main collage unit. Okay, so something kind of like that. And then if I just did that, there's not a really strong center of interest. So now I have to decide kind of what my subject matter is. Um, I could put something big like a butterfly on it and that would obviously be the focus or a word. And then that would obviously be something that you read and there's a focus and I could kind of put more things around that. And then maybe a smaller word and you know, I can choose whether or not to kind of cross that line and keep it all on this side or move over. So I might actually do both and put the butterfly on top and then some sort of word. It'd be like that. Okay, so everything here is kind of pointing toward our main focal point, which is the word happy. Everything else is kind of neutral and everything else is kind of pointing to the middle too. We have this round edge leading in. We have this flower is kind of facing up toward the center, this round part kind of leading down. So it really works for me and I like the way that looks. And then we have this kind of darker contrast around the word. So to me, that looks really good. So now we have to try to keep it kind of like this while we take it off and put it back on. So I'm going to just pull the whole thing down or if I was doing the whole cover, I would just try to build it to the side a little bit just so I don't lose track of where I want things. And I'm just gonna put them down one at a time. So I'll start with this sticker and it will inevitably shift a little bit from my first design. So I don't try to lay it out too perfect the first time because I, it's hard for me to keep track of it. Okay, now I'm just gonna eyeball if that is there and I want this. See, I already forgot how I had it. So I'll just put that somewhere in there. Okay, I think it was somewhere like that. And sometimes when I collage, I'll move it so much that I have to add new pieces and that's fine. You can just keep adding and adding until it looks right. So this will be there-ish. I actually like that better up there. It's kind of lost and hidden in that wing and it's kind of doing awkward things. So we'll just keep it up there. 
And I think I'm gonna shove this behind that. Is that weird? Even if it is, I think that's what I'm doing. So I'm gonna just shove that behind that. Okay, I'm gonna put on this sticker and slide it somewhere. I wanna be able to see the whole flower, so something like that. And then we'll put this underneath it all just to add a little bit more texture behind there. Okay, and I think now that it's all set up, I could like the butterfly turned in a little bit. So that's kind of nice because then this wing kind of lines up straight the edge there. And then it kind of leans toward, it's like heavier on this side. And I think that just balances a little bit better. And then we can put that happy right there. So let's do the butterfly first. I'm going to try to visually memorize where this is a little bit. And then glue it. Okay, somewhere like that I think. Okay, and then we're just gonna take this little wood letter and glue the back of that and stick it on. So I totally blobbed a big thing of glue right there. Let me press that on. And the cool thing about this glue is it rubs off really well. So I'm just gonna keep rubbing until it just kind of rolls off. You have to do this while it's wet, otherwise you, it'll just be stuck. So I actually really like that a lot. And there we go, we have a cute little collage and you could, you know, keep adding more stuff and building it out and make it as, you know, collagey, scrappy or simple and clean as you want. But this is about my level of scrappiness that I enjoy is a little bit of cleanness with like a cute design in the middle that looks a little bit intentional. So I am super happy with that. And thank goodness, I was a little nervous because, you know, collages don't always work out the way you want. You kind of just have to go with it and see. So, whew, I'm glad that I thought it was cute. And I'm like super proud because I did two journals for this tutorial and both of them are cute. So, two for two. So there we go. We just made a complete journal together. So I'll go ahead and show you this one in a little more detail. Um, I just put a couple more crisscrossy things because actually because I put the lace on crooked and the lace seemed just like it was bothering me so bad. So to fix it, I just put things crooked the other way and kind of added a bunch so that it kind of blended in. See, I'm telling you, you can always fix your mistakes by just adding more crap. Anyway, and then I just kind of did the collage here in kind of that same manner. Here's the little beads, made those little holes. And this is, um, this is a really thick fabric so I could really just lay the glue on and it's kind of awesome. You can't see through it at all. And then we're gonna open it up and we have that pocket page. We've got our um, fabric on the inside and we got paper on either side like that. And we sewed it in and this is our center pocket like that. I guess I didn't show you guys um, how I put a tag in this to make it a pocket, but you can see it on this one. All right, and this is a beautiful, fabulous, totally complete journal that I normally would put on my Etsy shop right now. But because you guys are giving me so much support and I feel very grateful, I want to give it to one of you. So here's a little bit more about that giveaway. So once again, it's for this journal that we has all the pages that we built together and from the last six tutorials and um, you can live anywhere in the world and I will ship it to you, that's totally fine. And all you have to do is be a subscriber and comment on this post. So make sure you're subscribed and if you don't know what to comment, you can just comment a little heart emoji and you'll be in the giveaway. And next week on March 1st, I'll post a new tutorial video for our, the next project we're gonna start and I will announce the winner of this book. I think I'm supposed to say stuff like this giveaway is not affiliated with anybody and YouTube isn't responsible for anything and I'll try to put all the legal stuff in the description. So make sure you leave a comment by the end of Saturday, February 27th. And I will see how many comments there are and I will use a random number generator and it will generate a random number and then that number of comment is what I will do. So please only leave one comment and if you wanted to ask a question or change it, just edit your comment instead of adding another one so that we can keep it nice and fair. And it looks like that recorded the whole time and my microphone is still on. So I think I just barely had a very successful tutorial and I'm pretty happy about that. So maybe I'm starting to get the hang of this after all. Well, thank you guys so much for crafting with me today. And I would love to see your journals, especially if you used all of my tutorials to create your own complete journal. I wanna see it. So take a video or post pictures. And the best way to contact me is on Instagram. You can just tag me at Kate's Junk Journals. And don't forget to ask me a question. And speaking of questions, it's time for a little Q&A. 
So it's been a few days since I filmed that tutorial and whew, I edited it up and that was an hour long. You guys are an hour into this. What are you guys doing here still? Don't you have anything better to do with your lives? No, but really I love that you're here. So my question comes from Sauki Fam and she asked to see my first junk journal, which I thought was a super fun question. So I ran over to my sister's house because the first junk journal I ever made was for her. So here it is in all its first junk journal glory. It was made out of food packaging. I think it was a minute rice box and just covered in fabric. And oh, her daughter uh, wrote in it so you can see some of her cute little drawings. But um, I got most of the supplies through my mother-in-law and by most of them, I mean like 99.9% .9 of this stuff. Um, Cause when she taught me how to junk journal, she gave me a whole box to go home with of different stuff and ideas and stuff. So I was really lucky that way. And I just kind of tried to copy things that I've seen and none of the pages are too complex. I really liked this idea of a folding pocket which is something I still kind of do, except for now I put like lots of pages in there because I now have some sort of weird obsession with cramming as many things I can into a page. But this is kind of fun to look through. So I tried to like write down some variety of things that people do in junk journals when I was with my mother-in-law um, and you know, different tags and tucks and folds and belly bands and things like that. And, um, she actually printed me out a list of different things I could do. And some of them I didn't know, like I didn't know the term belly band. I didn't know like, you know, what the difference between a tuck and a pocket was and stuff. So I had to kind of learn the lingo a little bit. And um, so I just went home and kind of looked through that list and tried to do things. And it was super fun. I just love the process of trying to figure out what to do and touching all the paper and textures and looking through all the vintage stuff and trying to put it all together. And you can see that I was okay with having pages without any writing space, which now I feel like I never really do ever. I haven't used these stamps in a while. I should use those. Sometimes you use things a lot and then you get bored of them and then you put them away and then you see them again. You're like, Ooh, that's cool. I should do that again. Anyway. And I made this probably, yeah, the fall of 2019. So, you know, it's only been like a year and a half. And there that is. Well, that was super fun. Thanks for that question. And thanks so much for hanging out with me today and good luck on the giveaway. I'll see you next week.